Hello everyone, my name is Gabrielle Gibran and I am an intern for Summer 2020 for Oilfield Basics. Today's video blog is going to be about women in STEM, specifically focused on the oil field. So I'm really excited. Here today I have with me Kristen Drain. She is a completions engineer with tons of great experience. I was actually fortunate enough to have her as my mentor last summer. She taught me a lot about engineering in the field, how to solve problems and even how to manage it and be successful as a woman. So I think that she's going to be great and I'm really excited for you guys to hear her insight. So Kristen, I'll go ahead and let you kind of talk a little bit about your background. Hi. So as um, Gabby said, I'm Kristen Drain and I am a completion engineer. I, have, um, I graduated from Merida College with a Bachelor of Science in Petroleum Engineering in 2006 and since then I have been working in the industry as completion and work over engineering with a little bit on the drilling side but not a ton of drilling experience. Awesome so Kristen why did you want to study petroleum engineering so if you think back about yourself when you were 18 years old entering college what what was attractive about the oil and gas industry and what made you want to pursue that degree? So I was always very interested and in just naturally drawn to physics and chemistry and math. And for me, I didn't really notice there was um, a lack of women that were going that way because I grew up in a small town in West Virginia and I played guy soccer. And so I didn't really see myself as anything different, but just one of the guys. And so, um, I knew I wouldn't be able to get a full-time job without some sort of master's degree in physics or chemistry. So my dad was pointing me towards engineering and um, I was getting recruited to play soccer at Marietta College, which that was the one school I wasn't going to go to because my sister had just graduated from there and um, I no longer wanted to be her little sister, right? I wanted to forge my own path. Mm -hmm. Well, she was getting an award and the head of the petroleum department, Dr. Chase, told my parents, just have Kristen come sit in one of our classes and we'll change her mind. And so I went and sat in a senior level um, hydraulic fracturing course and I went home and I was like, mom, I'm going to marry to college and I'm going to study petroleum engineering. <laughs> so it was kind of a roundabout way, but it really did work out for me. That's awesome. That's really cool that you got to have that experience too and kind of get a glimpse of what you would be doing in the future and what you are doing now. So that's really cool. Yeah. It was a good opportunity. So as a woman in a very male dominated field, what are some things that you have learned that have helped you succeed? So like I said, for um, even going through into college, it was one of those, I'm just one of the guys. So even when I started my career, it was just, I'm one of the guys. Just treat me like one of the guys. I don't want to be treated any different. Just ignore the fact that I'm a female. But as I got more experience, I realized, wait, I am a female. There are good things about being different and it's okay to notice those differences. Noticing them isn't bad. Um, so what I really learned was women's networks aren't bad. Even though for so long, I wanted to say, why do we need to have that? Why do you segregate me? Why are you putting all these women in a room and saying men are bad? which really isn't the intent of it, but that's the way 10 years ago when the first one I saw, that's the way it came across, right? Paint balloons and glitter. And I was like, okay, I'm out. So then it took several more years before I realized that, okay, we do need to do something, right? We don't see many women in the executive level. We see very few in the manager level. And why is that? Well, women are graduating at 30 to 40% in STEM degrees. So something's going on. Where's this disconnect? What's happening? So I got invited to a conference from one of our VPs. And um, that was when it was the most eye-opening. It was probably about a year and a half, two years ago. And it was the Pink Petro Conference. And um, we heard several speakers, but the first one that spoke, that really spoke to me was Barbara Annis. And she was the first person I'd heard speak that really spoke the science of the differences. And she was doing a lot of the neurology and neurosciences of the difference between men and women and how they think. Um, she was doing brain scans of different, different aspects. 
would recommend you watch her TED talk. But that's when it really got me thinking. There is a real difference and we need to take advantage of that difference, right? We need to look at that difference of thought. And so the two days of the conference, when I went back to work, I, I emailed that vice president and I was like, thank you for inviting me to this, even though I was extremely frustrated when I got the email that I had to go to this conference. But I really did learn a lot about myself and what I can bring back in to the workplace to help not just people with 15 years of experience, but also our young engineers, our um, interns. Like when you were my intern, I remember continuing to send you stuff about women in STEM and women in leadership because I don't want people to sit, hear that you're bossy, right? We've never, what man have you called bossy? You call him executive leadership skills and not just bossy. So those are the types of things we need to change. And it's even things I'm working out consistently because you have those unconscious biases. And sometimes a, a woman of childbearing age, right? She'll come in and you're like, man, is she really a good fit? She's going to have a kid. And then is she going to want to work the operations role where you're on call 24 hours a day? Well, I've worked with numerous guys who've had newborns and I've never once said, is he going to be willing to answer his phone in the middle of the night because he has a new baby? So it's just realizing what those biases are, even if they're unintentional. So. Yeah, I think that's great. I can also attest to when I was in trade, Kristen one day was like, hey, watch this TED Talk, read this article. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like that was part of my work was to really know all of the networking options that are available for us and really learn the differences because you're right. It's not that our brains, one's better than the other, we're different. And that's why we need each other because we complement it. So I think that's really great. So lastly, Kristen, what advice do you have for any young engineers entering the oil and gas industry? So take advantage of those networks and really network with them. So, so many of the speakers have came in and I'm like, oh, this is a waste of my time. I'm not getting anything out of this. But when I really started focusing on it, I realized I might not get a lot of every speech, but I'm getting something out of every speech. And when I add those together, it's making for a huge difference in not only how I perform my job, but how I'm helping the next generation realize it is okay to be assertive. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. So um, Denise Hamilton with Watch Her Work, she gave a speech at the Women's Network at Marathon and she said, I grade every relationship. If you give me a 10, I'll give you a 10. You give me a four, I'll give you a four. And that's fine. Everyone just needs to know where they stand. And that was very powerful to me because I feel as women, we always want to give no matter what we get in return. We always want to help somebody else. And then the other big piece of advice I would give is always sit at the table. So how many times have you heard, have you gone into a room and there'll be 20 chairs in the room, 10 are at the table, 10 are around the wall, and there's 15 people coming to this meeting. Almost all of the time, the ones who sit around the wall are women, just because it's natural for us to want to blend in to the background and not really be seen. So I remember probably a year ago, I was in a meeting with a vendor about a technical topic and I called them into this discussion and I was sitting at the table and there were several other engineers sitting around the table, several, several technical sales reps, and every time he went to explain something, he would turn his back on me and talk to the male engineer who was actually from a different department. And that's when I realized we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. Even though I don't think it was intentional. And that was an opportunity to say something to be like, hey, I don't know if you really understand you're doing this, but now that you do know, I think you should just be aware and try not to do that. And that would be my biggest thing. It's okay to speak up. Like, be aware. No one can help unless they understand there's an issue. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Thank you so much, Kristen, for sharing a little bit of your experience and your advice. I think this is going to be really helpful for the future listeners and viewers that watch this. So thanks so much and tune in for our next episode. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me, Gabby.